what's up everyone? How are you doing? Uh, I'm making a video again. Uh, I haven't <laughs> made a video in quite some time. It's been a little minute, but I have an excuse. So uh, I took a little while off making videos because I was working on something with the help of Roaming Lost and so many other people. Uh, we were able to pull about 16 thousand pounds of trash out of the Joshua Tree BLM land uh, about a month ago. We ended up having over 200 people show up to come camp for two days and then both days uh, while we had sun out we were all out cleaning up the entire area. People were using their vehicles to pull like massively heavy pieces of trash out of the landscape but I just I still can't believe how much we actually ended up pulling out of the Joshua Tree BLM up there and it was such an amazing weekend. I am going to be making a longer video on that entire process. Um, it might be more of a documentary style so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, that will take me a little bit longer to get that going. But today what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you an update on what I've been doing with my truck because I've been getting quite a few questions on all the new upgrades that I have on my 2017 Silverado. So I'm going to work from the front back and first thing you can see right here is that I now have a different bumper. So up front we have the Weston Automotive Pro Mod bumper. So this was given to me by Weston Automotive due, um, they wanted to do some fitment on a 2017 Silverado so I gave them my truck for three days and they did all the different fitment for a whole bunch of different stuff but at the end they said you can have a gift card or you can keep the bumper that we were making for it. And so once they showed me the bumper, I was like, I'm keeping the bumper because it's actually, I mean, it looks gorgeous on the truck. It's a nice hybrid between kind of like a pre-runner bumper and like an, like a, almost like a, what do you call it? Road armor kind of thing. It's made out of 10 gauge steel. And they also just gave me four pods and a 30 inch light bar to fill it out because that, that it has the spaces for that. Um, so that is a huge upgrade and I can't thank the Weston guys enough. It was an awesome uh, weekend to come back and see my truck how it was looking. I also have a new rooftop tent on the top from Rome Adventure Co. This thing is super solid and awesome. It's a little different. Um, I still have the front runner tent um, that I got from them a while back, but this one has the exterior awning uh, or like canopy off the front of it and I do now also have the annex that goes down around the ladder. Um, it's been really nice on those cold winter nights camping because I can put the little Mr. Buddy heater at the base of the ladder and it pumps heat hot air up into the tent. Um, so that's saved me a couple times. This one handles inclement weather um, a little better. We were actually out with Rome the other weekend and we got stuck in the middle of a rainstorm. Turned into a muddy mess. You got Lost Sasquatch up there. Jordan, got the Forerunner, the Raptor, see who makes it. A few other different features that this rooftop tent has is it's got, it's got like a moon roof for a uh, skylight on both sides of the rain awning. So when you do have the, the rain fly on top, you can still see out. Um, the aluminum bars that go across the top that have the architectural structure of the tent are a little thicker and a little more rigid than some of the other ones on the market. And so actually was, it's pretty taut, all the fabric's pretty taut. So we were in probably about 30 mile an hour wind the other weekend and I was not having an issue with that flat, 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 flat that you normally get with rooftop tents when you have a pretty bad wind. So another advantage to this tent, as you can see, where is it, right here, these have the bungee cords on the inside. So when you're closing your tent, these bungee cords pull in the extra fabric so that you don't have to be stuffing your tent in while you're putting it away. And that makes moving camp a little bit easier. But they also have this nice awning, kind of canopy tent area right here that you can see all around me. This opens up to give you a little porch window and then you also have two little boot bags down here, which is really nice. A, uh, another sweet thing about this tent is this is kind of the first tent I've ever been in that actually has like a proper mattress. Um, I'm not just saying that because 
you know, I, I know these guys at Rome, but this mattress is the first one. I believe it's, it's like a three inch high density foam mattress that is form fit to the bottom of this uh, footprint. So there's no sliding around, there's no nothing like that. And I literally can't feel, as I squish down, I can't feel the bottom platform. So sleeping on my side, that's normally how I sleep, but sleeping on my side in this tent is no problem at all. One other really cool feature of this is there is a uh, moisture wicking and condensation uh, mat underneath the mattress here. So I don't know if you can see that orange kind of dimply layer in there. But that helps a lot when you kind of get that moisture inside the tent and uh, you don't want it to be messing with your mattress at all. Also, moving up to the roof of the truck, I now have a front runner slimline rack up on the top here, which has made the biggest difference. Um, being able to store stuff up here, kind of my motivation for this is I'm really trying to work towards uh, when I pack up my rig, not having anything loose because I've been on a few trips lately where when I hit bumps, everything in the truck catches air and I've been breaking things doing that. So I've been really working hard on getting everything locked down tight in its place when I go off on trips. Also on top of this roof rack, I now have a hundred watts of solar from Goal Zero permanently mounted on top. So when I'm driving, when I'm doing things, it's always charging. <clears throat> so one of the other things that I've been getting super excited about, we're gonna be doing a few things in the future with them, but I've been doing a few photo shoots with Dometic, and that is one of the main reasons that I got the 100 watt solar panel permanently mounted up on top of the roof, is that I can be constantly charging my Goal Zero 400, which is then powering the Dometic CFX 40. All right, so what I have here is the Dometic CFX 40. This is the one that opens up long ways right here. Um, I actually ended up taking out one of the seats in the back here. Um, the Silverados are normally set up in a, I think it's called a 6040 seat. So I took out the singular seat right here and then I made this platform. And so what I designed was a little pull-out tray that I could set things down and then I can put away out in the fridge. But this whole thing is strapped down to my truck actually. And so when I'm off-roading and doing other things, this thing's now bouncing around. You can see also down here, I've got the Goal Zero 400 uh, sitting right here and it's powering it off the 12 volt plug. So I don't have to run my car battery or anything like that to power it, and it holds it nice and stable for when we're going off-road. This thing ain't bouncing anywhere. So one of the other things you might be able to tell is that my truck is now a little bit taller than it also used to be. Um, I started out with a two inch level. Um, I just recently went through the entire process of installing the Rough Country 3.5 inch lift for the four wheel drive Silverado. A little bit of a backstory on that because it's still kind of fresh, uh, fresh wound, but I'm gonna say it's a decent lift if you don't want to do anything radical with your truck off-road wise. <laughs> um, a whole bunch of people are saying like, <laughs> you know, told you so, but you know, you can't really do much off-road uh, with the geometry of your suspension when you just put that rough country. It's basically like a big spacer kit. Um, of course, it, uh, it didn't hurt the wallet as bad as actually properly going in and doing something. Uh, but I installed that entire thing. My downfall that I had in the Rough Country lift is in the instructions, it actually tells you to unplug the three plugs going to your electric power steering because the Silverado has electric power steering. Um, on doing so, there is a tiny little safety clip uh, that broke off. And when I went to Chevy, they were like, oh yeah, we don't... We don't unplug those plugs because they break off. Wouldn't you think a plug is designed to be unplugged and if it breaks while unplugging, it should be still under warranty? 
Like if your door broke while you're opening the door, it would be under warranty. But not a plug. A plug, if you break the plug, it's not under warranty. That's what Chevy said. And because that plug was on the actual uh, electric steering unit, they had to replace the entire unit. The reason why I replaced it was I was actually driving up 395 up above Mono Lake uh, this winter, right after King of the Hammers. And I was going up the grade and my power steering locked up. And when your power steering locks up in an electric power steering, it is a lot different than a hydraulic because it freezes. Um, I was very lucky to be pointed off the road and I coasted, <clears throat> I coasted onto the shoulder, turned the car on and off a few times, checked all the plugs, everything looked fine. I don't know what happened, uh, but the only other issue is it, it doesn't have the best geometry when you are um, you know, going in a fully loaded or fully extended. Um, in the instructions, they tell you to take the bump stop off the front, which allows the travel to go a little bit further. And actually what I've been experiencing is the upper control arm, the, the factory upper control arm that was still maintained in the lift, um, comes, in co comes into contact with the stock strut that I still have. So I'm assuming that's where this clunk is coming from in the front of my truck, but it's just a clunk for now. It seems to be still be working. Um, I'm saving up to do something big. You know, I really like the looks of the Dirt King or the Baja kits or something like that, and then put a nice like Fox or Icon or something like that. But um, gotta save up for that. But, uh, I do wanna show you that I am still running the stock Silverado rims and the stock Duratrax that come with the Silverado when I first bought it. Besides the fact that these are 31 inch tires and I've been beating the crap out of them, they have held up and have done every single thing I've asked of them. Uh, they, have some uh, they have some battle scars. There's definitely a few sidewall uh, rips and tears that are concerning me at this point. Um, but again, I'm getting to that point where I'm going to be needing some new tires and I am definitely trying to do some research on what is the best tire and what I can now fit because this Weston bumper gave me a lot of extra room inside the wheel well. I know I'm still dealing with some issue right here, but I'm hoping to go to somewhere around like a 34 inch mud terrain or something like that. But we'll see what I find. One of the last things that I'm really proud about that I'm going to show you before the sun completely goes down, but I've been working my ass off building a couple drawer systems for the Silverado. So, so I built these drawers with basically one purpose in mind and that's to be able to set up all my cooking and everything like that um, a little quicker and break down a little quicker when we're doing these long trails where every day we're moving to camp locations and I can't be taking out all my gear, making food and putting it all away. So I needed something a little bit quicker to be able to keep up with the rest of the group. So with that being said, I designed one drawer basically for storage and then the other drawer is more of a camp kitchen design. And so I use these big spring handles that pull out and you have your stove right here. On top of that, you also have a bar area that slides up and then underneath right here, underneath this front uh, little fascia thing, I have the ability to pull out a little cutting board. Obviously, I'm not done with this. I haven't stained or done anything to the inside. Um, there's still a few different things that I wanna uh, put on that side and I'm gonna make another video about the entire build process and what I went through making this entire thing, but it is 100%, well, I'm gonna say 100% waterproof on the outside, and then I actually use marine grade carpet um, to line the top and the outsides, and I'll be putting that in the bottom of every section inside the drawer. But I really like this because I'm gonna be able to cook, I'm gonna be able to chop and prepare, keep all my food, um, I actually am designing like a sink on that side and this is going to allow me to just get up and going a lot quicker and uh, yeah, more to come on this. A lot more to come on this. And coming up here in the future, uh, we are headed out to do the beginning of the Mojave Road, 
with SoCal Overland and MV Expeditions and a whole bunch of other guys. That's called Weekend Off-Road. We're gonna be having some fun stuff with them. And then uh, at the end, let's see, no. At the beginning of May, I'm going to be heading out to Overland Expo again. I was there last year. I got to camp all over Sedona and Flagstaff and driving in there was so much fun. I got to hang out with Overland Bound and this year is going to be no different. We are going to be leaving, I think about a week early, um, our group, and we're gonna be going through some pretty cool trails. Um, and then after, I'm not sure, but if you like this video, if you have any questions about what I've done to my truck, feel free to leave them below. If you enjoyed any of the content or anything that I've showed you, hit that like button, hit subscribe. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos in the near future. I'm gonna get back on the YouTube roll and I'm gonna be put, putting some videos out there. I also, again, I'm gonna be working on this Joshua Tree cleanup documentary because it was such an amazing experience and this is definitely not gonna be the last time that we do a large cleanup like this. So keep your eye out on our Instagrams, both Roaming Lost and Eyes. Um, for more information and where we're gonna have this next one because I think, I think this next one's gonna be huge. But thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace. Oh, one more thing before you go, uh, as a really small note, uh, don't all go there at once, but I'm building out a website, lostsasquatch.com. Right now, you can kind of see some of the knives I've been making on there. And then I'm also, I put up, um, a large majority of kind of some of my favorite photos from a lot of the trips that I've been going on. Um, you can download them and purchase them or you know get them framed or it actually has everything from a digital download to a photo print to a poster to a full framed photo or even on a metallic uh, metal print. Um, go check it out if you're interested there's some fun things. LostSasquatch.com